In this presentation, we will continue constructing our statement of cash flows using the direct method. What we've done so far is take our information on the left side, including a comparative balance sheet. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it a income statement and some added information create our worksheet our primary tool that we will be using to create the statement of cash flows we ended up with this difference column this is where where we are concentrating now we're going to find a home for all of these differences once we do so we'll come up to the difference in cash 91,000 uh, 61,900 and we've done so so far with the operating activities and investing activities we've highlighted and kind of made a nice colorful uh, picture here as we have done so and now we're going to go to the uh, financing activities so moving to the financing activities we're basically just going to look for these last kind of items and find a home for these items as we go so the next one's going to be here the short-term notes payable now now we know we already kind of indicating that it's going to go into financing but and you might just think, well, anything related to a note is pretty much going to be financing. But if you go through our thought process, you would say, well, what's the journal entry related to notes? We're going to, when we get the note, we're going to debit cash. We're going to credit uh, notes payable typically. Again, no income statement account involved. So it's not really an operating activity, which is kind of our default assumption usually. We didn't, now we didn't buy anything with a note typically if we note, if we just got cash with it. And so it's not going to be an investing activity. And you might start to think, well, what if we did buy something with it? What if we bought equipment with it and, uh, and we credited uh, 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 the note and we debited the cash and we, and we bought it? So wouldn't that be an investment? And you're right there, it would kind of be an investment. But note that in that case, there was no cash involved. We, we bought a piece of equipment and financed it. There's no cash involved. So if that's the case, we're going to have to dig down in here and kind of remove it from the cash flow because there was no cash flow we just purchased equipment with it so uh, just note in that case we're gonna have to fix these again these accounts we'll have to uh, dig down into in practice we'll kind of assume make the assumption based on the little information we have here and then we'll dig back down look at the gl and look at the few transactions that should be related to these notes there shouldn't be a lot of activity there should be we took a few loans out and we paid back interest it's not like again it's not like cash where if we, if we looked at the GL account for cash, we'd be like, we'd be very overwhelmed because there'd be activity all over the place, probably. If we look at the GL account for notes payable long-term and short-term notes payable, there shouldn't be too much activity. So we, we'll go back in there and look at the detail. Right now, we're just going to assume that, uh, that we borrowed money or paid money for these differences. So, and that means that there's no, there's no, uh, income statement account. And so, it's not operating we didn't buy anything we're financing the company we're getting cash to finance the company so it's not going to be investing and therefore it's going to be a financing activity when we pay back the interest you might ask you might say well interest expense is an operating activity but again it's not like the primary thing interest expense isn't the primary part of the journal entry to, to get the primary thing is to get to finance the company uh, and that's what the cash flow here is typically going to be so here we go. So we're going to say that the cash went from 10,000 to 15. So it went up. And if it's a note payable, then if the note payable went up, our assumption then is that we borrowed money. We got cash. So for us, that would be a cash inflow. So we're going to say borrowed money. And I'm going to say, just like we do with all of it, negative of that number. And of course, that makes sense because I'm flipping it from a credit to a positive number because we're assuming that cash came into the country the company this time because uh, we got a loan again we don't know that for sure and we're going to have to check that in practice i would check that but i'm not even going to go into the detail right now because i don't want to know the detail right now we just want to finish uh the cash flow statement 
and get to this number and then check those items that we know we need to go check. So I'm going to make this just a different color to indicate that we found a home for that. So we'll make all the rest of them. How about this color here? So, and I'm just going to use the same color for the rest of them here because they shouldn't be, uh, they, we should be able to find a home for them without too much complication. So without having to combine things in other words. Okay, so then we have the long-term note payable, same argument. So here it went from 77, five uh, up. So you would think again, we borrowed more money. So uh, I'm actually gonna, I know that we actually flipped it. So I'm gonna use a term saying uh, cash paid because even though I'm here, I would assume we, we borrowed money, but I know we actually paid money uh, because we financed the equipment. So I know, again, I know that this number there's more detail than is here. We're gonna have to deal with this equipment up top to deal with it. So although just from this information, I could say that it looks like uh, we borrowed money, I'm just gonna put cash paid because I know that's what actually happened. And when, once we make the adjustment, we will make that adjustment. We, I could put we borrowed money and then change the, the wording later, but I'm just gonna put it here that says we, can't, we paid cash. Again, I know that this number is wrong but it doesn't make sense for us to break it out right now. It doesn't make sense for us to get into the detail and start breaking this out and complicating the puzzle when we could just solve this easy puzzle first to get to this number and then complicate things in a systematic way so that we can always you know, be more confident that we're, we're, uh, we're still in balance. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna say negative of this number and there's that. So we'll say we found a home for that one. And then we've got common stock and paid in capital. Now these two, what, what, has to, what we have to assume here is if those change, and they don't change all the time because that common stock would only change if we issued stock. And that doesn't happen all the time. Stock is traded all the time on the stock exchange, but it doesn't, it's not always issued all the time by the company. Any new stock that's issued by the company means that basically they're looking for an investment by the owners. So this would be an investment in the owners. The only tricky thing here is that these two are we're basically going to combine. Why is that? Because if, if we sell the stock at a par value, that means that what, what's the journal entry? We would get cash for whatever we could sell it for the market price. We would credit common stock for the par value, which is some stated value typically less than the market price. And then we would sell the, di the difference would go to paid in capital. So these two, both the cash flows represent to represent uh, investment in the company. Now, this would be similar to if we're talking about like an owner who put money in the company of a sole proprietorship or partnership. In that case, the, the capital account would go up and we would and we would uh, debit cash and credit the capital account. So if you're working on a different type of entity, just note that it, this would be similar to the, the owner putting money into the the company for a capital account and note if you go through our questions it's not an operating activity because there's no income statement account involved it's not an investment activity because we're, the, we're not buying anything the company is not buying anything or the business is not to buy anything the individual is buying part of the company and buying stock but the company itself isn't buying anything the company is selling its own uh, claim to its own value, to its own future revenues and whatnot for investment, for capital, for money to finance. So that's why it's going to be a financing activity. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to put negative of this number minus this number. Same process, which basically adds them up and makes it a positive because this is a cash inflow. Cash is going into the company. So I'm going to say we found a home for those two. And then we got the last one, which is dividends. And dividends here, again, we, we listed it out because we listed out all the temporary accounts as, as uh, so this is a temporary account. So the dividends then, it represent payment to the owners. And they're similar to like a draw for uh, uh, a sole proprietorship or partnership. So here we're gonna say that means that cash must have gone out. It's a financing activity because what's the journal entry? It's going to be credit cash and debit dividends or retained earnings. Again, no income statement account involved, not operating. The company didn't buy or sell any assets. It's basically giving back value of the company to the owners. And that's going to be part of financing. So I'm going to put negative of this number 
flipping the sign, this is an outflow here. And there we have that. So then we're going to sum this up because we found a home for everything now and hopefully we're in balance. So we found a home for everything here. This one we found a home down here and then everything else we found a home for. So hopefully we're in balance. I'm going to sum this up, sum up the financing activities. We can even underline it here if we want to underline. And then equals the sum of these items. And there we have that. And then if we sum up this outer column, we should get back to this number. Notice that this number is getting pulled from here. I'm going to do it now by summing up the three components, operating activities, fi investing activities, financing activities. So let's sum up this outer column. So I'm going to delete this equals the sum and double click the sum and highlight these three numbers. That minus that plus that gives us the 61.9 and that matches what we have over here. So here we have our, our cash flow statement is working. It, it, this number ties out to uh, what, we would, what we would have on the difference. Now that's not the ending number on the cash flow statement because if we did that, then the people reading the statement would have to do a little work, meaning they'd have to take this comparative balance sheet we give them, take the difference between them and figure out that the cash flow statement ties out to that if they wanted to check that. But we don't wanna make them do that much work. So we, what we do is we tie this out this is really what we're trying to get to, but we tie it out to uh, ending cash. And, and the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna list out these beginning numbers. So this, uh, this is gonna equal this number, the cash on the prior balance sheet. And then if we add those up, that's gonna equal the 123,450, the cash on the current balance sheet. So then if someone wants to look at this, they're gonna say, okay, cash on the balance sheet, that should match the cash flow bottom line number on the cash flow statement. So that's just an easy tie out. However, this is really the number we care about because this is the change in cash. This is what actually happened. And this statement is a change statement. So now what we wanna do, we found a home for all these, but we noted we're gonna have some problems here. And the problems typically will happen in you know the investing activity and, uh, and financing activity. So we know we're gonna have to break out this number. So next we're gonna do that systematically. We're gonna have to say, okay, how can I systematically break this out without messing up the fact that my puzzle works right now? And this can get complicated, uh, but note that what we have here is something that we can, we have a good starting ground from. If we go somewhere else, if we go to like a, an instructor and say, this is where I'm at, I know exactly what the problem is, we can, we can list out exactly where we're at instead of starting over. If we're in practice, same thing. We can say, hey, this is where we're at. I know I need to do something here. I know I'm in balance now. How do I break this out to remain in balance and whatnot? And we have a starting point to, to go through without just kind of starting over. So that's the, gonna be the argument of using a method like this.